Hello, my name is Marcus Hill and I'm an Adult Services Associate at the Nampa Public Library. Thanks for joining us again for another installment of our This is Nampa Community Engagement interviews. We have some great guests for everyone today. We have the past, present, and future of Nampa's own Flying M Coffee Garage. We have with us the current owner, Chloe Hansen, and the founders themselves, also her parents, Kevin and Lisa Myers. What's up, y'all? Thanks for being here. Hello. Thanks for Hello. <laughs> so if it's okay with you guys, just to satisfy how my brain works, let's start chronologically at the beginning. So Kevin and Lisa, I'll start with you. I did my homework. I was looking up things. I saw that you're both UW Husky graduates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've definitely spent your time with your fair share of time immersed in the uniqueness that is the Seattle coffee culture. What did you love so much about it? And what were your instincts regarding translating that into a more rural culture like Idaho? <laughs> well, it was the um, kind of the height of the coffee scene when we were in Seattle. Starbucks was really starting to get rolling. Um, as well as there were quite a few quirky independent shops that we like to frequent, such as Still Life, Cafe, uh, Last Exit, just really down to earth and um, kind of feel that we have now with the eclectic furniture and living room feel. So we weren't too worried about the Idaho population receiving it. Um, when we moved back here, Moxie Java was uh, going with three stores, I think at the time. Um, there were a few other, I think Coffee Clutch was around and they were also kind of the vegetarian, <laughs> vegetarian vibe. So uh, it, was, it was obvious that Boise was well prepared. Yeah. Yeah. And now when I was saying one thing I really enjoyed was that when I was reading up on you guys, I saw that Kevin, you were from the Yakima Valley. And I just I enjoyed the, uh, the irony of a young man born in Washington wine country becoming a coffee guru. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lisa, I saw that you're from Nampa. So I mean, you, you were born and raised, so you kind of already had those roots here. So I mean, when you went to Seattle and you know you went to school, what was your experience there with? And and did you guys both like you met there? Is what I'm understanding, right? Yeah, we met. Um, gosh, junior or senior year at UW. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, did you guys both have the moment that clicked? Like, oh, you know what? let's bring that to Idaho or did you decide after you guys came back to Idaho, like, Hey, let's make this happen. Or. It was after, after Chloe was born and uh, we just wanted to come back to family. It was nice to come back home. Um, and Kevin, you know, Yakima Valley is very similar, similar to the Boise Valley. And so I think then making that decision to come home, then, Kevin was like, let's open a coffee shop. <laughs> so It was all the rage. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he did. He, uh, I mean, Kevin's an aeronautical engineer and he worked for Boeing. And so it was very. That was the numbers guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but out left field that he wanted to go into the coffee business, but, um, but exciting. I mean, I was on board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, it, it's so funny. Cause like, when you guys are talking about these things, I, I grew up in like the Kent area, if you're familiar with that. Sure. It's just funny how, you know, connections follow you even to places yeah. down here because my dad worked for Boeing too, Kevin. So it's like, That's awesome. it, it just cracks me up. Yeah. So I got to, I mean, I'm going to go left field here uh, since you guys know what's up with coffee. I'll take parenting advice from any of you, Chloe, you can chime in too, because you have the, you have the perspective growing up when growing up with this. Um, I have a one-year-old, so for somebody that's growing up in a coffee family, what is the proper age for the the child, the future, to get into coffee and start drinking coffee? I gotta know, were you sneaking coffee, Chloe, or what were you doing? I actually used to drink the foam off of my parents' lattes. I actually didn't like coffee until recently. Um, the caffeine is just weird for me, but when we were little, we loved the foam on my parents' lattes. They had an espresso machine at home and we would always ask for the first sips. <laughs> no, that's as long as I can remember. So I don't know how old I was when I started drinking. 
Yeah, we, we didn't have a pot of coffee going for the kids in the morning before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, well, I already, the other day, mine reached for the cup. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're one year old. <laughs> like, you're know. already bouncing off the walls, you know? <laughs> so when you guys all started, I mean, I know, Kevin, you said Moxie Job was down here, but I mean, like I said earlier, I grew up in Washington too. So, I mean, I totally get the, the uniqueness of the Seattle coffee culture. Um, as far as, you know, what Flying M is, the first time I ever walked into the coffee garage in Nampa, I mean, to be honest, it was like I was back, but at the same time, it was also, it had, it had just this Idaho Boise and Treasure Valley vibe on it. And it was a really comfortable feeling for me. But you guys have been in this game for a long, long time. Could you describe to me like maybe any shifts in the culture that, uh, or, or over time that have surprised you in the coffee business or like what things you've had to do or things you didn't see coming? I think maybe the biggest change has been internet and the wireless. When we first started, that was just in its infancy. And so we were really about face-to-face -face meetings and without the distraction. Yeah. Social media, whatever. Um, so interesting to watch that evolve. But at the same time, people still crave that one-to-one -one connection. So we've been able to offer both, especially in the, in the Nampa store, we have so much space you can kind of go off on your laptop at, and then there's still plenty of space to have a full on meeting. So that's maybe one of the biggest changes we've seen. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Uh, it's interesting that you bring up the wireless because when I was on your guys' website and you know, you uh, described this uh, 12 kilo purple Dietrich drum, drum roaster that you bought in 95 and how it's still still going. So I kind of went down the rabbit hole a little bit on that because I was like, I got I got to see what this looks like. So I started pulling up some info and then I'm seeing the modern ones and like they literally they're wireless. Like you can control them with like a tablet and things like that. And I just I never really comprehended that like it would go that deep. Like now you're controlling your roaster with an iPad or something like that, you know, and it just uh, it made me laugh. But uh, at the same time, it's like that. I was so impressed to hear it was like, it's still going from 1995. Like that is an impressive piece of machinery. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been one of our best pieces of equipment. Um, we've had to replace motors and such, but it's really well built. And they're actually built up in uh, Sandpoint. Oh. So yeah. they're fairly local. That is really cool. I, I did not know that. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> The original owners uh, sold it recently, but I think you can still take a tour if you're ever up north. Oh, that's cool. So do they have to like deliver that bad boy in like a huge truck? I mean, I mean, it looks, yeah, it freight, looks pretty large. Freight truck. Yeah. When we, when we started, um, we roasted in a little house at our home south of Nampa. And um, we basically wheeled that thing across the yard on on just dowels. <laughs> oh, we we had about four or five really young men <laughs> just manhandling that thing across the lawn. So. I'm getting images of my, of my head from like the Ten Commandments when they were like moving those big <laughs> monuments, you know. Yeah, it weighs a thousand pounds, so it was not. <laughs> so once you get it to where you want it, it's staying there. We left it there for ten years. Oh man! We moved it once more when we opened the coffee garage. Yeah. And that time we hired professional movers. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> I have a couple of things in my house. That I'm just like it's staying there, even if we sell the house. I'm, I'm not touching it. Like it's just too much. And so briefly, I would also like to talk to you guys about the Valentine for AIDS program art benefit show. Um, Lisa, would you be able to tell us about that and just give us an update on how it's looking for 2021? Sure. Um, it's um, gosh, I think it's our 27th annual Valentine for AIDS this year. Um, 
typically it runs in the coffee house in downtown Boise and um, that Camp Collins, the owner of the Boise shop runs and uh, Valentines are created. Uh, usually over 200 pieces are submitted and then they run for about 10 days in a silent auction. Well, this year, just because of not wanting to have groups of people together, um, it uh, was gonna go just virtual. And a couple weeks ago, Art Source Gallery in downtown Boise reached out to Kent and said they could host a mini Valentine for AIDS show for, for the ben to benefit SNAP as our uh, fundraiser usually does. Um, so Kent reached out to uh, about 50 artists and they all created a piece. Um, and so they're on display at Art Source Gallery. The difference is this year, you can just go in and purchase the piece and take it right off the wall home with you. You don't have to come back and check on your bids or come in the last day and, and fight for that last winning bid. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great show. And, and people can also, if they just want to um, support the event without getting a Valentine, can just go to our website and there's a donate button on the Valentine for AIDS page on flyingmcoffee.com. Awesome. Well, I mean, that's great news. I mean, obviously things change with the environment we're in right now with COVID and everything, but it's awesome that, you know, you guys are showing, and along with the Art Source Gallery, are showing the resourcefulness to keep a good thing going, you know? I mean, that's yeah. pretty much what it's all about. So I'd like to ask Chloe here, um, what have been the challenges so far keeping this train rolling. I mean, I know obviously we have to be flexible and on our feet and everything, but how, how have things been going at the coffee garage? Um, what, what are the main changes you've had to do and what do you have for plans moving forward to the future with this? Yeah, we've, we've made a lot of changes over almost a year now. Um, like my dad mentioned, the living room vibe is, is what we go for in our shops, but we don't want people to stay right now, which is really hard. That really goes against our culture mm -hmm. uh, because we're used to having a welcoming environment where we want people to stick around and invite all their friends. But right now it just doesn't feel safe to have big groups gathering in our spaces. So we've gone back and forth. We've had periods where we've had the inside completely shut down. Um, right now at our Nampa store, we have seating open, but it's just on the garage side so that our employees are separate from customers coming in and drinking their coffee and having their treats. And we have much more limited seating. So we've had to move all the couches out and space out tables um, and really encouraging customers to come in in limited capacity and not stay as long, uh, even though that takes a hit to our business, um, just trying to put their safety first. So keeping our employees safe too has been a, 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 at top of our priorities with, we have, you know, Plexi at the counters and obviously been requiring masks for a long time and are doing everything we can to keep a smaller staff um, just to keep exposure more limited. So um, yeah, lots, lots of changes we've been rolling with. It feels like every week there's something different, but we're really grateful that people still want to support us and are, are rolling with us and, and doing what it takes to still come and get their cup of coffee every morning. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's been nice to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And can you, I mean, you get people from the broad spectrum of society walking in there, still coming to get coffee. Yeah. And so, I mean, you have a really unique perspective on seeing how the Nampa community is doing. Can you speak to any of the resilience that you've seen, seen amongst your employees or the community at large this time? Yeah, it's um, like I said, it's really encouraging to see our regulars still figuring out how to get coffee, whether it's ordering online, having coffee delivered at their doorstep, um, picking it up in our stores. It's been really challenging because we can't have the same interactions with people that we used to. You know, we're used to catching up and it's so hard to hear with a mask on and we don't want people to linger for too long. So um, our, our conversations have become much more brief with those regular customers when they pop in, but it's still just so wonderful to see those familiar faces. We are all just, when we had to close down for that month, it was just crazy how much we missed all of our customers. You know, you're used to seeing them every day. We're we're hardly ever closed. We're closed like three times a year. So when you're seeing those same people every day, you're like, I'm, I'm really missing them. I just, you know, you kind of take it for granted, all those little connections that you have with your customers and your coworkers. And so that's been, um, 
it's been hard to, to miss out on some of those interactions, but it's been really wonderful that they still come in and support us and, um, you know, whatever it takes to get their coffee. Oh, for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully with things changing, things will get back more to a sense of normal in time. Um, uh, just, and I appreciate your time today, guys. And just to close things out and maybe we could start with you, Chloe, just, you know, to kind of give us, give the people a slice of life of flying M. Could you tell me about like one of the most meaningful cups of coffee you've ever had? Yeah. The one I can think of is actually when I was not at flying M yet. Um, I was living in Seattle. I also went to UW like my parents did and then lived in Seattle and my then boyfriend and I would frequent that was one of our favorite things to do was just find a different coffee shop in a different neighborhood and and go hang out and um the one I can remember is when we talked about getting married and it was really <laughs> we're in a little a little house in Fremont that they converted into a coffee shop and my now husband Adam was um just daydreaming about what our wedding would be and it was it was really sweet a really fun memory all That's over awesome. a cup of coffee and, and it's really awesome to see our customers have some of those same interactions to hear about people who who meet here we have so many couples that have come out of flying in <laughs> like customer to staff or staff on staff or customer to customer people who have gotten engaged here we've helped stage engagements and um it's amazing how much love comes from a cozy space like a coffee shop no absolutely i, I love that that was like the greatest answer ever that was awesome um what about you uh, kevin and lisa what's a what's a meaningful cup of coffee to you folks <laughs> i would have to go way back to um before i even started drinking coffee my grandparents on my mom's side were big coffee drinkers huh. and it was unusual because our my parents were tea drinkers they didn't, didn't pass down that way so my earliest memories are sitting around playing scrabble with my grandparents and <laughs> the percolator going and uh cup after cup so that's awesome so my grandma could beat me <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome oh, what about gosh. you lisa Oh gosh, I don't. It, well, for me, I I like Chloe didn't didn't really like coffee uh, until until we opened Flying M. So, um, you know, first days open, and at that point, I had to have sugar in my coffee. So <laughs> it was drinking mochas out of a vintage cup in our brand new business. You know, with a one year old and. So, yeah, that's awesome. I love, I love this. I'm glad I asked that question because those are all awesome. Just great stories. All right. Well, I just like to thank you for taking the time to reach out to the Nampa community with us here today. Uh, Chloe, where can people find flying M on the web and socials? We have a website, flyingmcoffee.com with information about all three locations. And then we have an Instagram. It's flying M coffee Nampa and Facebook is flying M coffee Nampa as well. We're always posting. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, Nampa, get out to Flying M and show them some love. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today in our latest installment of This is Nampa. We'll see y'all later. Thanks, Marcus. Cheers. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you.